Hey everybody, it is Wednesday at noon and I am coming live to do another training. I love having this opportunity to come on and teach you guys things. Um, things that I do in my business, things that I work with my coaching clients on, and things that I know can help you take your business to the next level. So with all of that said, we're going to dive right in today. And the training today is titled, What You Need to Know Before You Pitch to Be a Podcast Guest. So I actually wrote a blog post about this. So if you want more detailed information, you can head over to the blog, therobingraham.com, and read everything Um more details, even things that perhaps I'm going to miss here in the training just because we're live and I may get distracted. But um, there is a ton of information in the actual post. In addition, if you don't want to miss my Monday affirmation journal journaling prompt and and or scripture verses that you can use to meditate on or use as affirmations, be sure and subscribe to my email list. I am doing these emails every single Monday morning and it's just my way of hopefully inspiring you to really focus on that mindset work that is so critical for success, whether in life or business. So if you have not already subscribed to my email list, do so so that you don't miss out on that opportunity. These the messages are great. This week's affirmation, in case you missed it and are not on the email list yet, this week's affirmation is, I am remarkable. And I suggested that you make a list of every single reason you are remarkable. And reread that list every single day. Add to that list every single day or throughout the day when you think of things. But then every single evening, I want you to start practicing gratitude. And when you start practicing gratitude, you're going to see so many shifts in your life and your mindset. But every single night before you put your head on the pillow, I suggest that you reread that list of the reasons that you are remarkable and then write out three things that you are grateful for. I promise you that no matter how good or bad your day was, there are three things that you experienced or maybe didn't experience that you wanted to experience that you can be grateful for. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I suggested that. So be sure and subscribe to the email list and you can just go to therobingraham.com to do that. Okay, here we go. We're gonna dive into the training. So let's talk about being a podcast guest. I think before we start with the do's and the don'ts about pitching to become a podcast, podcast guest, we need to talk about why you want to become a podcast guest. So let's say you have this vision of a woman and she's sitting at a coffee shop table and she's got her head in her hands, tears in her eyes, and she's just shaking her head no. She is at her wits in. She's reached her limit. She's maxed out because nothing she's doing is helping. Nothing she's doing is moving her forward. She needs someone's help. You happen to have the skills that she needs. You happen to be the person that has a calling on their heart to be the solution for her problem, but she can't find you. So what is one way that she can find you with ease. Podcast guesting. You got it. Here's the thing about podcast guesting. If you aren't trying to put your message out there, if you are only using social media as a way to get your message out there, people aren't going to be able to find you. Only 2% of the content that you put on social media is read. Or, or I shouldn't say that. Well, maybe that's true, but only 2% of your followers actually see that content. So you're limiting yourself if you aren't trying to get other opportunities to share your message, to present yourself to the world. That is one of the biggest reasons that you want to be a podcast guest. Podcasts reach the masses. And if you pitch to the right podcast and align your values with the host values and you know that their audience is similar to your audience, their audience has the people that you can serve, that you want to serve in their audience, then you know it's a right fit for you and you know that you will be able to reach those people that you really want to reach, but those people that need you to reach them. Okay, so 
Here's another thing about being a podcast guest, why you want to do this. You want to do this because then you are already presenting yourself as a trusted individual. When you post things on social media and other platforms, you are showing up, but do those people trust you yet? Have you built relationships with them yet? Whereas if a host from a podcast invites you on to interview on their show, they already trust you. They trust you to deliver a good message, a solid message. They trust you to make them look good. They trust you to provide great information to their audience. So if they trust you, then their audience is automatically going to trust you. So you have that trust factor built in already, which is really super cool. Another reason that you want to be a guest on a podcast, it helps you with your content. You can take that podcast interview that you do on someone else's show when you're a guest, and then you can repurpose that as your content. You can write an email about it. You can put it on your social media accounts. You can put it on your LinkedIn account. You can share it on your Pinterest account. You could even write a blog post about being a guest on that show. So you can take that piece of information and highlight it in your own content for a long, t- a long time after that. You can also put it on your media page on your on your website and that lends to more credibility. So then as other people are exposed to you or as you pitch yourself to other people, they're going to see that, oh, she was on that show. That means that person trusted her so I can trust her too. So it comes back to that trust factor, right? And building that trust that is so incredibly important that we talked about last week in the training. Okay, so let's talk about, and if you guys... Please don't mind me. I um, don't want to miss anything. So I have my computer pulled up here and I just want to make sure that I hit all of the bullet points and don't miss anything. So I will be referencing my computer as I'm talking to you. So the, um, I guess those of you who are listening to this on the podcast, you are not really affected by this because you can't see me, can't see me, but if you're watching here on Facebook or if you're watching on YouTube, you can see me. So that is why I'm looking to the side every now and then so that I don't miss anything on my um, to-do list, my do list and don't list, okay? All right, so here we go, the to-dos. First, get to know the host of the show. There is nothing a podcast host likes less than a person pitching them that knows nothing about them and nothing about their show. Take the time to listen to their show before you pitch to them. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I have been pitched and people have said the wrong name of the podcast. They've said my name wrong. They or you know typed it wrong in the email message. They have misspoke about an episode, misquoted an episode. Like there's a million things that they have done. There's nothing bigger, nothing That is a bigger turnoff than that. Know your host before you pitch. Listen to those episodes. This is the second thing. And when you you do pitch, then ensure that your message is a good fit for their message, a good fit for their show. Are you aligned with them? Can you sense that, okay, if this is the type of content that they're putting out, then definitely my, those people, will resonate with my message. Okay, that's number two. Number three, customize your pitch. You guys, I literally get pitches that are copy and pasted and they're, it, it's so obnoxious because the fonts are different. The, the I mean, you, it's just so incredibly obvious that the phrases used are obvious that they were used for somebody else's show, not mine, because they don't fit. So it's a very important to customize your pitch. Take that extra time. If you don't, you're going to be told no. So take that extra time to customize that extra time to customize your pitch. Don't copy and paste a previously used pitch and be sure that if you do copy and paste, you still customize it, but you make sure that the fonts, everything are consistent throughout that pitch. Leave a rating and review on the podcast for that host on her show. If you don't, uh, uh, you know, you could still be be told yes to be a guest. I say yes to people all the time who haven't written a rating and review, but let me just tell you, if they have written a rating and review and my content is clearly resonating with them and they value my podcast, I'm much more likely to say yes. If 
they haven't written in a review, rating a review, and I do invite them on as a guest, I can tell you that they, I know without a doubt, they are going to produce immense value for my listeners, for you, but they are, they also have a very large audience. So if you are a deal, if there's a deal breaker potentially going to happen, be sure you've left a rating and review because it really does make a difference. And it really helps the podcast host be able to reach more people. Ratings and reviews are how people find podcasts. So, you know, that's how the word gets out. So be sure and leave rating and reviews. It's just a huge feather in your cap as the host is evaluating whether or not to have you on their show. Always follow the process that the host has established for their show to be for guests to follow. Meaning, if there is an application button on their website or if in the description of the podcast they say follow the application pr- process, do not email, then follow the application process. I can't tell you how many emails I get. And guess what? I don't have the time to review every single one of those. And now I'm to the point, and I know a lot of podcast hosts that do this, those pitches are deleted immediately because we don't have time to review them and respond to them. On my website, the top of the podcast page is apply to be a guest. In the description of the podcast, it says, if you'd like to be a guest, follow the pitch process. There is an application on the website. The website link is there. Please do not email, and yet I still get emails. So be mindful of that. If you have a PR agent that is, or a publicist that you are working with, remind them of these things because you're more likely to get yeses if those people follow the process for the podcast that you wanna be on than if they're not following the process that the host has set forward. Okay, so that's um, very, very important. Follow up on a pitch. If you have not heard back in several weeks, go ahead and follow up. I can tell you for me, it we have a six to eight week turnaround time, almost always closer to that eight week, eight week mark and sometimes 10 because we get so many pitches and we are so um, ahead in terms of interviews that I only review pitches every six to eight weeks when I have a block of time to actually sit down and do that. So if you are going to follow up, make sure that you give that host a time, some time to have actually reviewed. If they have an application process, do not email them. Most likely they are not, they haven't reviewed yet. Now, if it has been a month, two months, I would say, go ahead and email them and just say, you know, hey, I am just wondering, I I, fo- I would like to follow up on the pitch that I submitted to be a guest on your show. Um, I filled out the application. I'm just wondering if you've reviewed that application. Something very simple, quick, to the point. You may get a yes or no answer. You may not get an answer. Um, like for me, when somebody does an application, we very we send an email out automatically that says, it is going to be at least six to eight weeks before you hear back from us, please be patient. So if there is a message like that, do not inundate them with emails. But if they don't have that message and if they don't have an application process, you can follow up with them by email. Um, I would give it a few weeks because as I said, people get inundated with emails and hosts are always backed up with the number of requests and pitches that they get. So just be mindful of their time. The more courteous you are of the host time, the more likely they are to say yes to do, to you. Um, that, so that was the, the next thing was respect their time. Just be courteous and aware that they're very busy. They're creating a ton of content and publishing it every single week for you. So be mindful of the amount of energy and time that goes into a podcast episode, let alone managing an entire show and doing reviews for guests um, and all of those things. And here's another kicker. Make sure that the host is actually accepting guests. Some podcast hosts no longer are taking guests or they never did take guests. So make sure that you know, do not waste a host's time to pitch them if they don't even take guests because that happens a lot. Um, I was just interviewing on someone's show where um, she said to me when we came on, she said, Robin, you are my last interview. She said, I just canceled every interview that I had on my schedule for the rest of the year. I'm not taking guests anymore. 
And she's doing that for time management for her business and because she feels like she can create enough content, which is so incredibly awesome. But I was very fortunate that she kept me on her schedule, but she canceled every other episode for the rest, every other interview for the rest of the year. So that tells you that you have to be mindful of whether or not the host is still accepting guests or she only does solo episodes. Remember that hosts receive hundreds of pitches and unless you are a, ce a celebrity or in her mind already, um, your pitch isn't the most important thing on her to-do list. So just, again, that goes along with being courteous. It goes along with being mindful of her time and just being respectful because this is a, being a podcast host and running a podcast is extremely time intensive. Know the host values and the type of content that she publishes. If you are a person who, you know, I, for example, I've had people pitch me who were authors and in the title of the, their book was the F word. I don't use that word on my show. I don't use that word in my business. So, you know, be mindful of who you're pitching and what their values are. You wanna make sure that everything that you want to show and be part of during that interview is aligned with them. Your messaging should be aligned with them because if it's not, then chances are you're not gonna resonate with their audience either. Don't go grasping for straws to get publicity. That's not going to work in your favor. So f know what the content is, know, you know, there are some shows that are very explicit and then that's great if that's in your vocabulary. But if the show is not, be mindful of that and do not curse in the episode and make sure that you don't curse during the pitching process either. Um, follow that host on social media. When you, or when a host sees that you are actively trying to get to know her and build a relationship with her, she's more likely to have you on as a guest interact and engage with her content, interact and engage on, you know, on her stories and different, different content that she puts out there. Um, it it kind of goes back hand in hand with leaving a rating and review. The more relationship building you have and effort you put into building a relationship with her, the more likely she is to have you on her show. Now, I will say, be genuine. Don't just do this to get a guest spot. If you don't truly respect and appreciate someone, a podcast host, don't, don't waste her time and energy trying to get to, you know, put yourself into her world. Make sure that this is genuine and authentic. Don't just do this for selfish motives to try to get someone to have you on their show. The other thing is engage with the host um, throughout all of their platforms. So if they have a Facebook group, engage with them in their Facebook group. If they have a, um, an Instagram account, engage with them on Instagram. If they have a LinkedIn account, engage with them on LinkedIn. Make sure that you are recognizable to them so that when that pitch comes in, they see you as someone that is engaging with them, respecting them, interested in them, and supporting them because you're more likely to get a yes. Okay, so what happens if your pitch gets accepted? Number one, be on time. Two, wear headphones, earpo AirPods, um, headphones, whatever, to make sure that all of that external noise is being siphoned out so that you don't have distractions. It, editing takes a lot of time, and so if you have a lot of external noises going on, the podcast host is gonna have to take extra time to edit. So it's kind of just discourteous to do that. So make sure that you have your a quiet environment and there's no echo and you either have AirPods, earbuds, headphones, something on to try to control the noise in the area that you're in. Be in a well-lit area. Some people put their episodes on YouTube, some people don't. Some people take the video and they'll use that for social media content, um, some people don't. But all the same, there's nothing worse than trying to have a conversation with someone and interview someone than when they are very poorly lit and, and it's dark and you really can't even see who they are. So just make sure that you're nicely lit. Um, just in case they're taking screenshots for promos, they're gonna publish the video or whatever, just make sure that you're well lit. And make sure that there are no distractions in your area either. 
um, silence notifications on your phone and your computer. I can't tell you how many times I've been doing an interview and all of a sudden there's a ping because they have just received an email or their phone goes off. So just make sure that you silence all those notifications. It's just another thing, another way that you can be very courteous to the host to ease her post post processing um, time that she has to spend editing. Uh, let's see, say thank you. After the interview, send a thank you note. Hosts really do appreciate that. It, again, they're giving you the opportunity to reach their audience, to grow your audience through being on their show. So make sure you send a thank you note. It doesn't have to go in the snail mail. It can go just an email. Um, if you don't have their email address, then send them a DM on social media, but just thank them for their time and for giving you the opportunity to be on their show and reach their audience. And then share the episode the, that the host publishes with your interview with your audience. Send out an email, share it on your social media platforms, share it, like I said earlier, even in a blog post. You don't have to do that, but it's optional. Um, put it on your media page. Make sure that you are supporting the host for having you on her show. And that also will help grow your credibility with your own audience when they see that you have been on this show. I am going to um, tell you that when you are um, pitching a podcast host, make sure that you have a media kit ready and available. So you can do a couple of different things. You can have this in a Google Drive folder, a Dropbox folder. You can also just have a link to it from your website, but make sure that you make it as easy as possible for that host to have your bio, a brief bio, not like a dissertation or a full resume, but a brief bio so that they know enough about you to do a good introduction or to have that in their enduring content after for a blog post or whatever. Make sure that you have a headshot a professional headshot is preferred. You do not want to send a picture where you are not well lit and you can't see your eyes in the photo. Keep in mind that the podcast host is going to be creating graphics to go along with the show for promotion. So you wanna make sure that that picture is representative of who you are today and that it looks well lit and professional, if at all possible. Um, have a one sheet that includes suggested content, suggested questions, so that the host doesn't have to go searching all over the place to discover what it is that she wants to talk to you about or what key questions would be beneficial for you to answer to help her audience. And then, um, I guess that's it. So that's what you wanna have in your media kit. And again, you can link that from your website and on your media page, and you can also have that on you in a Google Drive or whatever or a Dropbox but just make sure that you share that information with them up front so that they don't have to go searching for it. Whatever you do, don't make them have to ask for it in a follow-up email because that just takes additional time. Most hosts will ask for this up front in a questionnaire format. So if they have that questionnaire format, make sure that you complete that in a timely manner at least 1 week prior to the interview because you don't want the host to have to send a follow-up email. You don't want to have to want to make the host have to, you know, question, ask questions for that that they don't really have the time to do. Some people will actually cancel the interview if they don't have the information that they've requested. So it's really important to remember that. Okay, now for the don'ts. This is a. These are big. At least for me, they're big. All right. So the don'ts. It isn't cool to say how much you like the show that you are pitching if you haven't listened to it. Hosts can see through fake emails. I get pitches all the time from agencies and the the hosts, or I mean, the, the people that they're actually pitching have never listened to my show. They don't even know that that agent is pitching to me and they definitely haven't listened to the show or written a rating and review. And honestly, it. It, it, some hosts will take this personal. For me, it's kind of like, okay, this is the process. This is how it goes. But make sure that if, a ho if a, you have a publicist or PR agent and they are pitching you, make sure that you know who they're pitching. Make sure that that podcast aligns with you, like I said, and make sure that you have listened to that show, especially before you go on the show so that you know the format and you're not blindsided by that question that they ask every single guest at the end of the interview. Okay, don't cite an episode of the show 
that isn't relative to your pitch. You want to make sure that if you are raving about an episode that you've listened to on their show, make sure that it is aligned with you and your message so that they can see the correlation as to why you found value in that post or that episode. If you're complimenting the host, be genuine. Because again, we can see right through these, you know, fake compliments that, oh my gosh, I love your show, love what you're doing, you're putting such amazing, amazing content out into the world. And then in the next statement, it's obvious that they've never listened to the show. They don't know what the platform is about. They don't follow you on social media and they, they can see right through that. So make sure if you are complimenting about the show that you have genuinely listened to it and you genuinely believe that, yes, this is awesome. And I know that I can help your listeners based on the incredible content you put out. So another suggestion, um, never pitch to someone in a DM on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Unless you know them, you're engaging with them already, you have a relationship with them. Because if you don't and you're not even following them, they're definitely going to say no because they, they don't trust that you know anything about them if you don't even follow them on that platform. So make sure that if you're going to pitch in a DM, make sure number one, they don't have an application process. And number two, make sure that you have a relationship with them, that you've been engaging with them, you've been showing them how much you appreciate and respect their content. Um, Let's see, let me look at my list here. Oh, don't show up late for an interview. I think I said that before, show up on time. Again, a lot of times hosts will have back-to-back interviews. I don't know for everyone if this is true or not, but I know a lot of hosts will do their podcast recording on one day of the week and we will schedule them with a 15 minute interval in between. So if you are late, then that throws them off for the rest of their schedule for that day. So be mindful of the time, don't be late. In the interview, this is really important too. Don't be a know-it-all, don't, Don't go on and monopolize the conversation. This is the host platform. So when you go on to be a guest on a podcast, you wanna make sure that you are not only making yourself look good, but you are making the host look good. They have graciously invited you into their home. So make sure that you are, again, that word respectful, but respectful, make sure that you Give them an opportunity to respond, that you give them an opportunity to show their knowledge and wisdom in addition to you. Don't monopolize the conversation, MBA. I'm putting this in air quotes, know it all. Okay, absolutely no selling during the interview. If the host gives you an opportunity at the end of the show to offer a link to a lead magnet or a freebie or something like that, yes, absolutely 100% take advantage of that but do not sell during the interview. You can mention how you work with your clients as part of the conversation, as pointing out an example, but do not sell during the interview. That's not why the host has had you on. The host has invited you on to educate, inspire, or entertain her listeners. So make sure that if you are going to interview, you are not going on to sell because First of all, it's a turnoff for the host, but second of all, it's a turnoff for their listeners too because that's not what they came here to listen to this episode for. The host is giving you that opportunity to connect. So don't don't sell because her audience will follow you if you show how great you are at what you do and you prove yourself as trustworthy and an expert in your space. You don't need to sell if you can do those things during the interview. Don't forget to complete all the paperwork, the questionnaire, whatever it is that they request from you ahead of the show, ahead of the time that the interview occurs. Make sure that you don't forget to do that. And then never ever send a non-professional headshot or a headshot, like I said before, that is doesn't look professional, that is not well lit because that 
just takes up additional time for the host to follow up with you to make sure that they have something that is nice and reputable for the graphics that they create. Keep in mind that this show is so incredibly important to the podcast host. They are investing so much blood, sweat, and tears, energy into this podcast to help their listeners and to grow their business. So anything you do that could offend them, show disrespect, be lack um, authenticity, lack um, being genuine, any of those things are going to neg- negatively impact you. And, and podcast hosts do connect and collaborate offline. So if you're not a good guest, you could also you know impair your chances of being a guest on other shows. So make sure that you are very, very respectful, that you are kind and courteous and very um, gracious and thank the host at the end. Okay, so I'm going to refer you to episode 90 where you can learn more about how to find podcasts that are a good fit for you. In episode 90, I interviewed Case Lane and she helps business owners, entrepreneurs find the podcast that are a good fit so that you aren't putting yourself out there like a fish flailing in the water or out of the water. Um, because you're pitching people that aren't a good fit for you. So she, we go over um, a, a lot of this etiquette, but most importantly, we go over how to discover those podcasts that are a good fit for you. And we talk about how to search for them and all those kind of things. And then there is another episode where I interviewed Michelle Glogovac. And actually, I've interviewed her twice. And we talked about podcast etiquette. And I think it was episode, I'm trying to look in the blog because I know I linked it there. I want to say it was episode 122, but, um, oh no, they were episodes, yeah, episode 122, which is how to pitch to, to podcast host and journalists. So that one we actually talked about the um, other media outlets, not just podcasts. There's a significant difference in pitching the two because journalism is a lot of times, they need something very quickly, but podcasts are more um, like delayed response because um, p- content is planned out ahead and things like that. So that's a great resource for you. That was episode 122 with Michelle Glogovec. And then in episode one fi- or 53 with Michelle Glogovec, we talked about uh, how to get guest spots uh, for free PR as well. So between the two of those episodes, or the three of those additional episodes, you can learn a lot of information and really have a solid uh, map of how to pitch podcast hosts so that you can get guest spots for free PR, which are marketing, uh, to connect with more people and make your audience bigger and open doors for you in terms of getting clients without actually having to sell, which is so incredibly awesome. If you have any questions, drop me an email at robin, R-O-B-Y-N, at therobingraham.com. Happy to answer any questions about this episode. If you've been struggling, maybe I can give you a little insight. If you're curious about working with me and actually incorporating a PR strategy into your brand marketing strategy, Jen, reach out and I will send you the link to my calendar. We can get on a quick call and discover if what I do is a good fit for what you need. I am happy to help you solve your problems. And even in that 30 minute phone call, sometimes it goes a little over, but in that phone call, There's so much opportunity to get advice and find out additional information from my perspective on what you could do in your business, just quick little changes and fixes that may make a big difference for you in the day-to-day grind of your business. So if you are interested and curious, book a call with me because I would love to help you navigate all of your efforts within your business, including PR. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you immensely. And I will be back for another live training next week. So stay tuned until then.